Hey guys, we just finished opening two booster boxes. Those videos are gonna take longer. However, I'm gonna open all these. I'm gonna open them five by five, I guess, and then they will be about a booster box itself to see which one gets better value. Now, five of these cost the same as probably, if you're gonna pay around the same range as a box. So the difference would be you have 30 packs and you have five foil promos. Remember those foil promos are actually worth quite a bit of money and they're guaranteed. So it's kind of like a pack, but not really. Um, booster boxes are obviously the way to go if you just want more packs, but I will get a shipment of fat packs soon and I'll open the fat packs. We're gonna go ahead and we'll assume this is pretty much a booster box because it has 35 packs. And a lot of people be like, oh, it's not a booster box. Well, we have those two. We have the real booster boxes, we have the real fat packs. I mean, it's not like I don't have those. Um, so I like the deck design. I like, it's a really cool little, okay, so let's see what our promo is. And put our box aside and our dice. There's actually different color dice. There's a green dice and then a gray dice. So we got Akram Halkite. So not the best start to this pack opening, but hey, it's uh, so I will, I'll just keep it in the case. I'll put it right here and let's see. Yeah, so once I get the first one down, it'll be a lot easier. I will zoom in a tiny bit. Uh, let's zoom in this much, yeah. So we will continue to open until there are no packs left unopened. And I'll put push these to the side. Actually, that didn't help. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy these type of videos. I know some people don't enjoy them, but uh, I think the most of my subscribers do enjoy this type of video. So yeah, this one's pretty good. It is an elf that produces mana, which is not the worst case. I get a ton of this dude. Scrying, ooh, and gruesome slaughter. This is a card that is kind of like a wrath effect. Until end of turn, colorless creatures you control get tap this creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. It's an interesting card. Actually, I'm going to put the promo aside because it just doesn't, it kind of messes with um, the lighting. So I'm hoping to an expedition because I've definitely purchased enough packs to have an expedition or a few expeditions. Uh, one of my friends I just met has, has purchased 1,200 packs. So he will probably, cause, I like this one a lot, Titan's Presence. Endless one is a pretty cool combo piece. Um, yeah, I like, I like the way they do the art for these Adrazi. They look very nice. <laughs> Imagine, actually this is kind of interesting because each of these pre-release kits is kind of someone's pre-release. Kind of. And War Caller. This is, I like this card. This is like the same pack, isn't it? <laughs> Retreat. Okay, so not bad, not bad. Foil lands seem to be kind of difficult to get. Merfolk Ally. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may put three plus one plus one counters and target land you control. If you do, the land becomes an OO elemental creature of haste that's still a land. This is very good. And we get our first foil, Retreat to Hagar. Um, yeah, so this guy's pre-release kit is not looking so good. This card is a bomb. I love it. Uh, I couldn't play aggro. I only played two times and then <laughs> they dropped and that was the end of that. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite card. It is obviously Gideon. Gideon is not a princess, but he is pretty badass. I think Gideon is going to be the best planeswalker. And we got a scout. The scout is pretty awesome. Uh, so this one turned out pretty good. We got a Gideon. So that was probably the best card so far. I don't know if we can top a Gideon. I have a suspicion that these pre-release kits, and I'll show you because I have opened two boxes. I have this notion that a pre-release kit is actually a lot better than a typical box. And the reason being they want new players to start. I mean, you can't give new players crappy cards, although I did get a lot of crappy cards at my pre-release. Ooh, this 
Card to kind of, I thought it was Lavana for a moment, but it's a beautiful card. It is a 4-4 flying land drop. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return target non-land permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If that land is a plains, you may return a non-land permanent card to the battlefield. This card is very, very good. There's actually infinite combo in standard, I believe, or at least modern. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep going and going and going and no idea when these videos will be uploaded, but hey, I love these lands. I think the lands as commons are a very cool card to get. Vampiric Rites, Malkic, and Lumbling Fall. So this one is Lumbling, is very, very good. I'll probably move these cards and then I'll do a recap. I've pro probably have opened close to, definitely over a case. So this one, this particular pre-release kit was very, very good. You got Gideon on top. Um, so I'll put Gideon, I think Gideon and Lumbering Falls are already two cards that we should look at. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll keep opening until... I have obviously multiple cases of Fat Pack coming in. I have multiple cases of uh, Booster Boxes coming in. And yeah. So hopefully we get a better promo. I'm hoping for a Mythic promo. <laughs> wow, so we get another pack. I, I'm okay with this if, you know, I'm okay with uh, getting this as my promo. I don't have any complaints about that one. And we will continue to open. So this particular pre-release kit's promo was a lot better than the last one. Again, I love promos because you're, you don't have to, uh, I don't have a use for commons, non-commons, typically anyway. Because I open so much of it. Ooh, Nullify, come on. Oh, this, I had this one during pre-release. It was not the best uh, card. It's nice, like just like I was saying about the regular Zender card, you can open packs for days and not feel bad because at the end of the day, you have a full art land. It would be nice if it was foil, but you can't always have what you want. Uh, this card was a bomb. Ooh, we have this card. Um, Okay, this is an interesting card. I. I don't think it's very good. Uh, green Warden of Musa, four in double green, elemental. It is a mythic. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever it leaves, um, you can exile it. So, you, and if you do return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's not really that great of a combo piece in my opinion, uh, mainly because, actually I'll lay out. I'll put the promos to like one side that you can't see because they are, I'll put like the box out like this way and I don't know it's not in my opinion all that great of a card especially for mythic it does not feel mythic to me but I don't know maybe it'll become a combo piece I don't think it can be because it exiles itself before it can really become a great combo piece so we have a weird card at the end like is are you seeing that oh it's a, it's a uh, token I believe I felt like it was kind of weird. We get another Strangler, and oh, it's an emblem. No, this Plains is really weird. Like, it's, notice this, this, I didn't do this one. So the Plains is a square Plains. Like, look, it's not cut properly. Um, it's as if they were going to cut it. That's why I said it kind of felt weird because it, it doesn't feel like this. It's really, yeah, kind of an interesting Plains to be honest. Um, NA Obnix list, Obnix token. So I originally said that he was really bad. Now that I've seen him and played against him, he's actually kind of good. <laughs> I think QR is the least powerful of it, of the bunch. Uh, Gideon for sh Gideon is a beast. Like Gideon is Gideon, and there's not very much I need to say about him. Scrying's kind of cool that we get that reprint. Sanctum of Ugin, and a Rust of Ice. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping this was a island, but it was not. And it's kind of nice. I will be able to tally all my cards and tell you exactly what the ratio is. Sanctum of Ugin. Uh, one, whenever you cast a color spell converted mana seven or greater, you may sacrifice it. If you do search your library for a colorless creature card, review it, put in into your hand. So for your library, this might see some play. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think it's okay. It's an okay card, but it's not. One of the problems of opening so many packs is you get like a lot of trash. I guess I could recycle it. 
Meyer. Emissary, Breaker of Armies is really good. Retreat, Exert, Influence. Huh. Uh, exert, and we got planes. Exert, Influence, Converge, Gain Control, Target, Creature, if its power is less than or equal to the number of colors. So if you're five colors or four colors, this might be playable, but probably not. Um, ah, so this person's pre-release kit was less than desirable. And unless we pull something really good here, and did they pull a foil or no? I don't know. Foils are pretty common. Touch of the void. Fun. I mean, this. We. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a very interesting pre-release kit. So let's summarize this pre-release kit and then add it with the other one. So Gideon. Gideon. We got uh, two sanctums. So. <laughs> Uh, not probably the best card you want to be pulling at pre-release, but hey, whatever. And our mythic is a green warden of Musa. Musa. Someone in the comments, let me know. I'm sure even if I don't say that, someone in the comments will let me know. I'll, I guess I'll stack them here so you can kind of see. Okay, next kit. These videos are going to be like super long just because I have to open these kits. You should see the room I'm in, because remember I opened two booster boxes already. Oops, there goes the dice. So it's just packs and packs everywhere. I guess we could save the pre-release card for last. Do you guys want to do that? Let's save the pre-release card for last. It's actually kind of more exciting that way. Because pre-release, a foil pre-release card is not that much different from the regular foil. So in my opinion, these kits should provide Additional value. Cruiser. Archive. Painful Truths. Okay, I've not seen this card. Oh, this is kind of interesting. It's kind of like if you are tricolor, you get some more value than the other card that exists, which I do not remember at this moment in time. So, Painful Truth as the first card for this guy's pre release kit. Let's name the people. What do you want to name this guy? What do you want to name the guy who got Gideon? Just one name in Gideon. Pilgrim's Eyes is a cool reprint. I like this card. I did pull one during pre-release. I couldn't play it. I think this card will be played. It seems very, very good for this type of deck that it has Death Touch. And the Ingest, should the Ingest be more relevant? Um, I don't think it's relevant right now. I'd see that as a very powerful card in the future. Definitely as a two drop. Two is essentially a spot in most decks, uh, especially in that type of deck where they have problems with. Okay, Lumbering Falls. Why, like, I don't understand. Can I get like any of the other lands? Like, why do I always have to get Lumbering Falls? Uh, already this pack was, this pre-release kit is better than the other pre-release kit. Oh, no, no, the other kit got Ruinous Path, so that's not bad. The other kit actually was a lot better now that I think about it. Oh, uh, Hero of Goma. I keep getting this guy. I have like five of this dude. I don't know if he's good. He doesn't seem good. But maybe, maybe one day his price. So we got a red token. Nettle Drone was a lot better than I expected. That card was a beating. Bone Splinter is a card I'm very excited to see reprinted. Uh, that's definitely a card I love. Titan's Presence. Oh, finally, we got one of these. Um, I was hoping we would get more of these. Uh, Cinder God Glade Mountain Forest. Uh, it is one of the slow lands. Um, I believe we're going to call them slow lands from now on. Like I'm going to call them slow lands on this channel, and unless someone like really is offended, like what do you think these things are called? Uh, unless someone's extremely offended, that's what I'm going to call them because that's what they to me are called. Um, Damping Post. Another exert. Influence and a medic. So no foil lands. I think foil lands are kind of difficult to come by. I only have one in a ton of packs and are Yeah, <laughs> it's a mythic But it is uh, I wish oh this is not the wow. This is a different mythic, huh? This is the most odd mythic I've ever seen because you can't do evens uh, your opponent your opponents cannot cast even spells with even converted mana cost Zero is even. Uh, your opponent cannot block or creatures with even converted mana cost. So, a very interesting promo. Uh, I think I like to have the promo last. That's kind of more fun, in my opinion. 
So that one, we got Exert Influence, we had Stonehaven Medic, we had Cinderglad, Lumbering Falls. That one was not bad. Two land is not bad. I'm okay with that. And we're going to go like, it's a promo. Yeah, the promo is at the bottom. So we'll save the promo. I love these boxes too. I feel like they did a very good job packaging these cards in a way that people would actually be interested to buy them. If that makes any sense, of course. So you guys can probably expect a ton of videos. I know you don't like when I spam you, but do you want to see videos or not? Ooh, Wasteland. Okay, this is like Wasteland Strangler number five or something like that. I don't know, I'm pretty excited. The promo can be a mythic or a rare and it will always obviously be foil. That's why I feel like these are not a bad value if you can get them, if you can get five of them for the same price of a Beast Caller Savant. So this is the ally that produces uh, haste. Add one color of any, to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. I kind of wish he was just a tiny bit better. The creature spell breaks it for me. It's not like that relevant. In my opinion, of course. Outnumber, Vestige, Void Attendant, Blighted. Oh, this was a very good land, the Sacrifice of Creature land. And Conduit of Ruin. Um, whenever you cast it, you may search a library for a colorless creature card or convert mana to seven or greater, reveal it, and then shuffle your library and put it on top of it. Your, the first creature you cast each turn costs two or less. Wow, this is actually very interesting as a six drop. I wish it had a slightly bigger body if it was a six six, but I mean, it makes everything cheaper by two. And it tutors. Tutoring is kind of relevant. I mean, I can convoke for six all the time. Wow, this card might not be bad. Colorless card could be Ugin, but it's not a creature spell, so it's gotta be a creature. Probably Ugamog, maybe. I get six, I can see it if you have enough ramp. Um, I, I just don't know. Shared Drop is one of the best, absolute best cards in the set. And we get a Blighted Wood Hill, Guardians of Tazium. One of the best, if not the best, bomb in the set. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. If that land is an island, that creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. A 4-5 is or, or flying is already like a lot of value for limited, but the fact that it has that ability to make every land so powerful. This card is very good. It makes like every land one of these. Love uh, Sky Spawner. My, love this card. Retreat to Valakul. Ooh, Corrotine and Processor Assault. Um, this Let's talk about this mythic a little bit. It is a very interesting mythic. Um, I like it a lot. I think I like it more than most people. I do feel like these games are going to go much, much longer. So if you can get up to eight, it's doing a huge, huge amount of work at eight. At two, at four, I don't know. At four, it seems uh, to be less. I mean, it not only is less, it's not instant speed. It's not any of the stuff that you would want it to be uh, with the status one, which is a uncommon, so. Here we go, we have a island, no foils. Um, eek. I don't know if this particular one was very good, but I will summarize at the end and I will summarize all of them. Turn against is pretty good. Okay, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with one of these lands. Um, I do need, I think the man lands are one of the most attractive lands and it's time to flip. Oh, of course, exert influence, um, why not? So was, is that enough? Is that five? Oh no, we have one more. God, these videos are so long. You guys are killing me. Um, you guys are killing me. These videos are just so long. All right, we have one more for the booster box and we'll go like this. I liked it. I, li I liked to, uh, when we flip the, the foil, because the foil can be epic. It can be an Ugamog. It can be a Gideon. I would love a Gideon foil. And I think that's why I would value these kits if you can get them at a similar price. Ugin's Insight is pretty cool. I think Ugin's Insight, and we got a 
Oh, Gideon. So we have a Gideon one. Ugin's Insight, I feel like, will be played. It seems very good to me. Uh, and because you can just scry so much, right? And the scry ability is so relevant. And when you look at what cards are very good in blue right now, there's a card with Delve that is very, very good. Now, it's not five most times, and most times you play for two, but this ability, I like it too. I like this um, in conjunction with that. So I don't like it to replace it. I like it just hor hor horribly awry. Um, Flying Vigilance, pretty good and limited. I did get one of these during one of my pre-release. So I went to, I'm gonna go to five pre-releases. So yeah, this is pre-release like number one I've gone to. And then pre-release number two is at two o'clock. Um, I probably will go to Strike Zone. I don't know. Blighted Wooded Foothills. Oh, I like this card. And Ugamaga Nullify. Not the correct uh, Ugamaga card, but uh, I love this card. I love it in conjunction with uh, a certain princess. And I think it's very good. I definitely would play it in that particular build. And we get, okay. <laughs> We're not gonna do that, guys. Um, and people ask you, oh, you're not reading the cards. Well, because I have like so many more packs to open. Conduit of Ruin. This card I feel like is very good. The more I think about it, first of all, it's a tutor. Uh, it is a tutor ability. So yes, you don't draw the cards, not a demonic tutor ability, but it's kind of like a vampiric tutor ability. And the fact is you can set it up for something huge because and it's not just the uh, first creature card, it's the first creature card each turn you cast and doesn't have to necessarily be a colorless one. So you're gonna like, it makes everything so much cheaper and it's not like a terrible body. It's not like you're paying a six for something that can be burned out easily. It's a pretty good body like on that card. I, I think for a rare, it's pretty good. Oh, we get another one of these. Um, Please, please give me a Kiara. I think I, I, I know Kiara is not as good, but I love Kiara. There's very little I have to say about her, except, oh, this card is very good and limited. Retreat, Dust Stalker, number like 18 million. <laughs> it's really interesting when you open these kits and we're gonna flip. Ambush Leader, uh, Haste Rally, whenever an Ambush Leader or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may essentially scry four. You may review any number of ally cards from them, put them these cards in your library in any order, and then rest on any bottom. So, this card's not bad because it has a good body on it, so it's not a bad card. So let's summarize what we got. So as foils, we I think the best foil we got was probably the Path. The Path was not a bad foil. And the best card we got was Gideon. So I'll go over the cards right now and look forward to a ton more of these videos. And I'll summarize them. So we got one of these. So I'll do the Mythics. Um, Cortine Field. Conduit was a pretty good. Gideon, one of these lands. Uh, the Mythics were, there was a lot of them, just not like super great ones, in my opinion. And we also got a Mythic Foil, Lumbering Falls. Uh, I guess we'll put the land on top. Sanctum, I don't know. Sanctum, that's not really the type of land I'm looking for. And then we got one of these. So we did pretty well. Like, I think it was pretty good. And there's a misprint somewhere here. Um, so yeah, so we got the right amount of mythics and four lands. So yeah, it's pretty much exactly what we needed to get. And if you add the foil mythic, we got four mythics. Bye, guys.